Welcome back. It is the Danny Dot Podcast, which is the podcast uh, about anything and everything, and most of the time, nothing. <laughs> I am Danny. I am coming to you from Central Otago, New Zealand. For all the new people that are listening, this is podcast number 49, which, listen, I didn't think would be significant, but I was approached by a podcast content creator a couple of weeks ago, and they said to me, Danny, you need to start numbering your pods because people that join in season two still want to go back to season one. And I thought, what? Are you joking? (laughs) That was when I was learning how to do things and I did not number my pods. So I have done that specifically for you guys. But the significance of pod number 49, that to me just means that I've turned up for 49 weeks straight. I've turned up to something that I didn't think I was going to be achieving. I put one foot in front of the other and I am so proud of myself because not only did it actually take a couple of years for this to get off the ground, but I was very much self-taught in a sense. So I think when it comes down to it, I was always going to be a public speaker. Um, It's just being in the role that I'm now for my full-time job. I lack a lot of personal content, um, a contact, sorry. So obviously having a pod was remarkable for me to keep doing because it meant that there was a sense of vulnerability, uh, exposure, <laughs> and it's something that my friends and family have always said you need to consider doing. So cheers to me, podcast number 49. I'm, I'm just so proud of myself. It's unbelievable. <clears throat> I am doing little things to celebrate, I'm not going to lie. However, I have come to the conclusion that pod number 50 is actually going to be after a significant event in two weeks' time because I cannot take a season break (laughs) without sharing something that's going to happen in the next two weeks, which I know all of you listeners will be very interested in. And I just feel like it's so exciting and significant that I don't want to hold on to it until season three comes about, if and when that happens. Um... Obviously, we're just taking it day by day, and I will get to what I'm talking about, but I've come to the realization that Pod 50 will be an interesting, exciting one, and I do need a bit of time to gather myself for it, I suppose. Um, (laughs) No, it's not a guest situation. It will just probably be a story thing, but I feel like it would sum up season two perfectly, and I'm ever so excited to share So anyway, kicking this podcast off, I'm going to touch on something that I completely forgot to last month, uh, last week, I'm so sorry. That is what I was mentioning in my Instagram about the dopamine menu. Now, this is a trending topic at the moment. Dopamine is something that we are absolutely lacking in, and I don't know what's going on with the world, but it's relatively important. So I thought I'd revisit it and just refresh everyone's mind. Dopamine is known as a feel-good hormone. It gives you a sense of pleasure. It also gives you the motivation to do something when you're feeling a pleasure. Dopamine is part of your reward system. So the trending topic right now is that everyone has a dopamine menu. And the girls from the Two Broke Chicks podcast are actually playing on it this week and telling you how to do a dopamine menu on the cheap side. For myself, I was getting a little bit like, well, there are a lot of things that make me happy. And there is a lot of things that obviously doom scrolling can do to your mental abilities. So I would believe that dopamine would be significant in the sense of it's not including things on your phone. You take a step back. So I made a bit of a list of the things that make me happy and give me a feel good hormone. Um, And they are such simple things as most recently I have picked up the book A Thousand Boy Kisses by Tilly Cole. I've almost finished it, you guys. Last Tuesday, I hadn't even started it and I was telling you about it. Here I am. I think it was Sunday night. I had to put the book down at 1 a.m. 1 and I was thinking, my God, I have actually found a book that I have fallen into. I have cried. I have been shocked. This book is stunning. Ticks all the boxes. So for me, I actually can put on my dopamine menu as something that I would turn to instead of doom scrolling is reading. And I think, oh my God, I'm so proud of that. (laughs) Uh, Hot girl walks. Um, I'm very much someone that enjoys getting outside and enjoying fresh air and exploring. Haven't done it so much recently because of the weather down here in Central Otago. It's been a bit doom. Um, But we are on the border of spring. So get out there. Go and tick your steps up and get all excited that spring's coming. Breathe in that fresh air. Make yourself all feely good about life. 
Um, for me, cooking. Cooking is a massive pleasure of mine. I enjoy it so much. I enjoy throwing dinner parties. I love cooking. It makes me so happy. I'm the most creative person Monday to Friday. No, I take that back. Monday to Thursday. <laughs> um, my mom actually cooks Friday, Saturday, Sunday. She enjoys being creative and having that time to do so. I'm a bit of a socialite those days, so I enjoy coming home and, and getting to you know, have mum's cooking, which is relatively fun and makes sure I have all the nutrients. We always tend to have a kind of a big nutrient dense food uh, meal on the Sunday just so that we can start the week off on the right foot. I'm not really one to meal prep. Obviously, I work from home, so I don't need to meal prep. Um, but I can understand that obviously if you were someone that organizes your week with your food, that would absolutely give you a feel good hormone. Um, such things as obviously the everything shower. <laughs> Females, we are so big on this. Um, I think it fits with all our social calendars. The feel, the everything shower is the obviously cleaning, washing of your hair, getting into all the cracks and crevices, making sure that we've taken off dodgy fake tan that's coming off. Our, we've cleaned up our fingernails. Only recently, I would probably say the last three months, have I clipped my fingernails every single week and made sure I had fresh nails for the weekend, which is crazy. I don't even know where it came from, but I would honestly say for the past five weeks, easily, I've had a different colored nail polish when I went out and I have been so proud of that because I don't care about nail polish, <laughs> but it made me feel good. And, um, Obviously, it contributed to that whole everything shower where you get into all the moisturizers and, I don't know, the cleansers and your skincare routine. And it was bringing me joy. So I just wanted to share that obviously an everything shower should be on your dopamine menu. Um, and then obviously just the everyday things such as being social and making sure that you check in with all your friends. We're in this really weird stage of our lives at the moment. Um, this month is a little bit wonky. Uh, I don't know what's going on. I know it's something to do with that stupid blue moon that we had. <laughs> Everyone's kind of fallen off a little bit. And I personally know that last week I was feeling really icky and heavy and agitated. I actually got so mad that I'm not going to lie. I threw the vacuum cleaner down the hallway <laughs> in like a fit of rage. And I don't even know where it came from. And then I just burst into tears. And I was like, oh my gosh, what is going on? So there was a bit of a bit of weird stuff that happened last week, and we'll get into that soon because you know me. I'm an open book, and I want to share my experiences because I know that obviously people are going through this kind of weird stuff as well, and we are not alone. So <laughs> part of my dopamine menu is kind of number one. It's to be social and get out there and push yourself into social situations that you feel a bit awkward in because odds are other people enjoy your company, and it's just like a mind thing. So for me, I would absolutely put the phone away. I would turn it off if I probably could, but I haven't done for a long time, actually, and just actually be very present in a conversation or a, um, a social environment. More often than not, when I go out, I don't even have my smartwatch on to give me like alerts for notifications on my phone. I'll actually just <laughs> not have a watch at all. Um and barely ever pick up my phone. It's only just on the off chance that I might need a ride or something that I might message mum and see if she's awake. And I'm like, can you come get me? <laughs> um, but no. So these are the kind of things that are on my dopamine menu. And it's something that I recommend everyone put um, maybe like a small four dot list together and put it somewhere that you see all the time to just remind you, you don't need to always be doom scrolling and, and making yourself not miserable as a sense, but dopamine is so important for your general well-being. And I feel like there's so many good ways to get it. We just need to find our peace and what makes us happy and just run with it. I don't know. Anyway, off the bat of last week, obviously it was Tuesday and I was telling you guys that I was going out on a random night out with some friends that I made about six weeks ago. <laughs> that was not a lie. Um, I had, I would honestly say it was one of the top five nights out this whole year. <laughs> and when you live somewhere that's like half an hour away from like a central like town that kind of parties any day of the week, I haven't been out in Queenstown for about, I don't know, four years on a weeknight. It just doesn't happen. So this was interesting for me. I was a little bit like weirded out by the whole thing because I was thinking, 
you know what's going to happen is I'll lose them in town. I'll end up having to ring mom, come get me, right, rah. No, <laughs> this was the most unorganized chaos of my life. And I can't wait to share it because it was just so strange. So I got told that I had to be ready to be picked up and um, popped into a vehicle about well, quarter past five on the Tuesday, which was absolutely fine. I grabbed a couple of drinks and I thought, are we allowed, are we drinking in the car or are we just, you know, going into this whole evening sober? And they were like, no, 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 it's all good, Danny. Um, have a couple of drinks in the car. And I thought, I'm going to take some margaritas. <laughs> First mistake. Um, we get through to Queenstown and we go to Macca's, which is fine. Haven't been there for ages. This is the Mac McDonald's in uh, Frankton. And the traffic is chaos. I didn't know what was actually on the agenda for the evening. I thought we were just going to go into town, get some food, go to a gig. Easy. No, no, for a couple of hours before the gig was starting, we went to a friend of ours sister's house. I don't know who this chick is, never met her in my life, and I walk in the door with my margarita in my hand, give this chick a hug, as I do, and within 10 minutes, I wouldn't even say less than 10 minutes, you guys, not a word of a lie, she says to me, just completely off the bat, I feel like I know you. <laughs> I was like, well, you don't. I live in Cromwell, and uh, I haven't actually been... I don't know, out or I've had a job, you know, five, six, seven, maybe even more years ago in Queenstown. And she says to me, are you single? And I thought, Jesus, buy me a drink first. <laughs> but she had a friend who had gone through a terrible relationship and he was a really off the bat, charming, beautiful man. And she was like, you know what, I'd love to set you up with him. And I thought, are you joking? And so... I finished my margarita and I put the can down on the coffee table and it made kind of one of those empty can clunk noises. She was like, instantly, are you out of drink? And I said, no, there's more in the car. I'll go get some. And then she's like, no, no, my house, my rules. She goes to the kitchen and she pours me the biggest glass of white wine I've seen in a long time. It was full to the top. And she was just like, we need to talk about more about this blind date that I'm going to set you up on. And I was thinking, oh, fuck. I says, you know what? At the end of the day, I feel like this is a lot of pressure, but also I'd hate to let you down because you don't know much about me. And she's like, yeah, but I just feel like you've got such good energy. And I just would so be thrilled to set you up with this guy. And I'm like, show me a photo. I want to see what this guy looks like. Not a word of a lie. She says he doesn't have social media. I don't have a photo of him, but he is my child's uh, godfather. And I thought, oh, <laughs> well, if you're actually going to acknowledge that there's a guy in your life that's your child's godfather, I 100% will entertain this. So in two weeks' time, I'm going on a blind date. And I feel like after this blind date, it would be epic to do podcast number 50 to wrap this season because, I mean, this is like the pinnacle, you guys. This is me really going into the dating scene. Like, I'm not just dabbling in it. People are setting me up on stuff. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, look, it's going to happen. I am thrilled. And we left the house to go to this gig. And I was saying to my friend in the car, wow, I feel like this is a lot of pressure. And they said, no, no, no. The thing is, is that I actually thought that you should date this guy. And I didn't want to bring it up because I thought, who is she dating right now? <laughs> and I was like, oh, far out. So I shot myself in the foot a little bit by seeing an emotionally, um, what was I calling him the other day? An emotionally unstable salmon. <laughs> Uh, because there are a lot of other people that want to date me and, and people that want to be introduced to me at this moment in time. So we went to this gig. It was actually just the funniest thing. I cannot even tell you. I don't even know what it was, to be honest. I literally just said I was going to Queenstown to go. I didn't know what I was going in for. I'm sitting at this bar stool at this table talking to a friend and this guy, oh, you guys, I can't. He comes out of the toilet and he is like a blonde Chris Hemsworth. And he just, like, he looks like Thor. And he walks past and I catch his eye and I followed him to the point where he walked behind me. He ran his finger across my shoulders and to my other side, looks me dead in the eye and he goes, that jacket's going to come off in half an hour. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like my heart just fell out of my ass. I was like, is he joking? And my friend heard him and she looks at me and she was like, oh my God, that was sexy as fuck. And I was thinking, oh my God, oh my God, don't leave me, I'm scared. 
But um, he turned out he was the lead singer of this gig I was at. And I don't know if maybe he meant it in a sense of like you were going to be up dancing and you were going to lose your jacket or whatever. But um, we ended up ending the evening leaving at this gig near the end. It was fine. But we went to McDonald's and... (sighs) God, <laughs> I don't know what it is about the Queenstown McDonald's after a couple of drinks, but random funny shit happens. And I just, I wouldn't ever forget this, but the last time I was there about five, six months ago with my cousin, the power went out. We all got locked in the Maccas. We all had free food. It was like people's orders that they couldn't get in through the doors to collect. Um, It was just, it was chaos. <laughs> <laughs> this time I went running to the toilet and I'm sitting there and I hear a little bit of commotion, nothing major. And randomly out of the blue, I see a mop come spinning under the door. And then I thought, shit, <laughs> the cleaner wants to get in. So I've got to hurry up. So I put my jeans back on and I walk out and my friend is standing there with this cleaner waist jacket thing on and the mop in his hand. And he's just standing there. <laughs> I just almost keeled over laughing. I thought, are you joking? I just rushed a pee thinking that I was being kicked out and it's you. And anyway, he went in to go to the loo and I put the whole outfit on and I I was walking around the restaurant pretending I was the cleaner. There were some like random people that were asleep in one of the booths. So I parked up this mop next to where they were asleep and one of the numbers got called out. So this guy wakes up and he moves the bucket (laughs) He goes and collects his meal. I'm still standing there. By this stage, I'm like, who stole my McFlurry? Like, I want my McFlurry, but it had actually been swiped. Someone had collected it, and it was mine. Anyway, I saw that this guy fell back asleep, so I moved the bucket back over to him. (laughs) I was just being a little bit of a pest, but at the same time, I was like, someone swiped my McFlurry. I'm waiting for an ice cream. Anyway, they remade it and we ended up leaving. But there was just so much chaos and humour that was happening. I thought, McDonald's never lets me down. It used to be the Ferg Burger line. There was many a times and many instances that I could tell you about stuff that I got up to in the Ferg Burger line. It's like the older I get, the more shit of the food gets. And I just, <laughs> now I'm at the McDonald's stage in my life where shit's just stupid. <laughs> anyway, driving back to Cromwell was like the most chaotic situation. I don't think I've ever really done that at two in the morning after a whole lot of alcohol, but holy, it was an interesting ride, but we got home in one piece and um, kudos to our sober driver. It was a really awesome evening and I had so much fun and I'm still thinking about all the weird stuff that was going on, but I just couldn't shake the fact that there was this random chick that was setting me up with a guy and she friend requested me on social media and she's like, hey, just so you've got my details and stuff. I'll um, flick you through some more information close to the time, but I'll organize with him what is going to happen. And I was like, are you joking? So it's, it's actually turned into kind of a big deal for me. Um, it's very exciting. I have organized an outfit and it's coming. Um, but obviously, as the week progressed, the blue moon oh, played its heavy part in all of our lives. I had so many people message me saying that, you know, they were either irritable frustrated, angry, people didn't know if they wanted to cry or punch a wall for whatever reason. It got to Friday and uh, I had a bit of a stupid heavy week and it was to the point where I was just so overwhelmed and emotionally drained from the stupid stuff I'd been doing. Um, And my boss told me, oh, you know, log off and just, you know, wind down, talk to your mum, just get everything off your chest because it's been a real shit time. And I said, yeah, I know. But it shouldn't be like that. Your your full-time job shouldn't be attributing to how you're feeling. In hindsight, it, it was kind of part of the problem, but majority was it was just, you know, what was actually going on around me. I don't know. Anyway, mum says to me, like, let's go to the pub. We'll have a couple of drinks and just sort of, like, see people. Maybe it's that. Maybe you actually need to, you know, you've spent a couple of days in the house and um, you just need to get in the social contact of things. I said, oh, okay. So I go down to the local pub and I'm sitting there having a couple of drinks, nothing major. And uh, this guy that I really, really like is at the at the bar and there's this random guy sitting at my table uh, who's lovely. He is kind of like a dad figure to me. And he says to me, can I sort you out a date with the farmer? I really think you should. And I just was thinking, God, why can I not commit to having a, a date with the farmer? Because I'm still admiring the emotionally unavailable fucking salmon that I cannot detach from. 
And I burst into tears and I don't know where it came from, but I was highly overwhelmed with everything and I just like let loose. I was just like, I don't want to be here anymore. I want to go home. And anyway, I ended up going to my uh, neighbor's house and just absolutely exploding <laughs> emotionally. Um, but at the same time, I just feel really like happy that I was supported in that sort of situation because there was so much going on and I just lost the plot completely. But um, I decided to remove all communication with the emotionally unavailable salmon because, honestly, a lot of people have said to me the last couple of days, you've got to get, um, what is it, under somebody else to get over someone? And I think, oh, my God, how are people saying this to me when they know full well that it's been about 15 years since I've ever caught feelings about anyone and now you're just saying, oh, but it's easy. You can just get under somebody else and get over that person that's broken your heart. Oh, you're joking, right? <laughs> so this is why I'm coming to why I've called this podcast the Revenge Pod. It is absolutely not a revenge on him. It's more that I woke up Saturday morning and I just had this absolute weight lifted off me. I removed everything that our communication stood for and I wasn't sad about it. I was more like we're going into this with a new mindset and I was very excited uh, it was my neighbor's birthday that evening, so I had a reason to get dressed up and feel good about myself. But the dress, the dress that I chose to wear, and this is where it gets real crazy. Like, oh, I tell you, everything happens for a reason. You've got to trust the timing of your life, blah, blah, blah. I've said it the whole bloody season. I put on a dress that last year in November, I wore to a social function in Brisbane with all my nearest and dearest. I was very rushed. I was very frazzled. I was stressed out. I wasn't myself. I was excessively overweight because I was unhappy about the whole situation that was happening last year. And I don't know why, but I chose this dress and it didn't fit. It was horrible, but I didn't take that much to Brisbane because I was going on this cruise that this dress had to do. And so anyway, I don't know. I don't know what happened, you guys. I put this dress on. It fit. I felt amazing. My confidence went through the roof. I was happy. I was laughing. I was like, wow, I've literally broken the chain of feeling miserable about someone that I thought I cared about. I've stopped the communication. I'm not sad about it. Um, I'm going to go into this with an opportunity to have a date with the farmer I'm going to go on a blind date with someone that's just setting me up with some random guy that she thinks I would enjoy the company of. Um, and I walked into the kitchen with my hair sort of a little bit like, I don't even really know how to describe it. It was quite windswept. And I it's an off-the-shoulder dress. And mum just looks at me and she goes, oh, who fucked you off? <laughs> <laughs> and I was standing there and I thought, are you, what? And she says, you actually look like Princess Diana when she found out about Charles and Camilla and when Charles cheated on Diana with Camilla. And I was like, oh my God. And I looked at the photo and I was just standing there and I thought, oh my God. It's so funny that you say that. So it's not the revenge on him as it is the revenge on myself that a year later, this is where I'm at. I've got this dress on that didn't fit. I feel amazing. I'm going into the weekend with a clear mind. Had a shit Friday, yeah. <laughs> but I had people around me that helped me and supported me and, and navigate that shit time. But also, like, I didn't really, I had no worries, you know. And the confidence just oozed out of me. Like, I just couldn't stop smiling. I don't know what it was. Anyway, I go down to the local and um, I'm just sort of, I don't know, I had this real strut about me, like I was just prancing around, just having fun, not a care in the world. And this guy, he's just, he says to me, can I, can I tell you something? And I thought, oh, for goodness sakes, what, what are you going to say? Like, I don't even know this guy that well. And he says, I, I'm going to tell you something, but I don't know how you're going to take it. And I thought, oh my God, you're freaking me out. What are you going to say? And he says, you're not the type of girl that I go for. And I went, are you joking? <laughs> <laughs> this is someone I barely know, you guys. And I looked at him dead in the eye and I said, that's okay. I don't, it's okay. If if I'm not someone you would normally go for, then don't go for me. I'm scared. Um, but quite frankly, I'm not here to 
break any hearts or do anything I shouldn't. So I'm just going to stand over here with my friend, dance a little bit more, have a couple of drinks, and then I'm going to go home. Um, and he was like, yeah, but yeah. And I just thought, no, 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 don't say it. I don't want you to say I'm on your mind or something stupid because I'm truly not going to be like leaving a lasting impression or anything. But there was something about this whole outfit that it was just, I had all these people gravitating towards. And there was another friend of mine that's just, you know, he's in a relationship and everything. He just, he did that whole twirly thing where he held my hand and he made me twirl and he was like, wow. <laughs> and I was standing there like, I don't know what's going on. I feel really good. Um, and yeah, he, it's just, it's, I don't know. I honestly cannot fault what has been happening these past few months. I'm so overwhelmed and happy but just how much it's like radiating across to everyone else and I just think oh my word (laughs) it's wild anyway the night was ending and uh, a very dear friend of mine walked in who is someone that I obviously I have fancied for a, a wee while and it cracked me up because there was no wall separating the fact that I should move forward with anything with him And quite frankly, I just sort of stood there and cracked up laughing and I was like, now's your chance. And I have this um, (laughs) like wallpaper on my phone at the moment that says, girl, do it for you. And I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go do it for me. And so it turns out this guy, I went back to his house. He lives a stone's throw from my house, which is absolutely perfect. And I went back there for a couple of drinks and just hanging out. He was putting the moves on. (laughs) And I was sitting there and I was like, this would not normally happen. Um, honestly, like I don't attract that many people that fast. It's not a thing for me. I get nervous at the idea of someone touching me. I'm like, oh my God, how do I react? So obviously I've had to take a step back and, and step out of myself, but also lean into the option of someone else um, enjoying my company. And uh, honestly, it's just like throwing caution to the wind. You just don't even care anymore. So here I am at this guy's house who I've fancied for a very long time, <laughs> just just enjoying each other's company. And then at four in the morning, I uh, walked home in the rain in my dress with my tights and my boots and my, and my handbag, just laughing, just smiling, thinking, oh my God, <laughs> I cannot make this shit up. I am thoroughly impressed with myself. Um, but more to the point, it was just one of those like real holy shit moments and I wanted to share it with you guys. Do you have a revenge outfit? Do you have something that you put on and you just transform into this really awesome alter ego that makes you just feel like you're invincible? I didn't realize that dress was going to do that to me and quite frankly a year ago it made me feel miserable. If my friends are listening to this from Brisbane that were there at that moment, you guys know that I was a bag of shit. (laughs) I was crying, I hated everything, I was miserable. Holy shit. Look at me now, a whole year later. It is crazy. So honestly, I just wanted to tell you guys this awesome experience and share it as podcast number 49 because I'm very proud of everything. Um, but also, I have written down here, I just wanted to share, obviously, a lot of people have been asking how I've been feeling. And I don't know, this whole experience has just been so therapeutic and everything else that I hope that you've enjoyed this whole season as much as I have because sharing all this random stuff and putting myself out there and I don't know the the feedback and the the (laughs) it's just it's so crazy I'm not someone that's very uh chatty when it comes to the social media side like I'm not going to push the podcast you choose to listen to it and that's great but also I get such a sense of um, excitement sharing this type of stuff and it feels like it's just, it's all come into this full circle for me. I don't know. (laughs) So weird. Anyway, I am going to wrap this up here. My revenge was only on myself, not on a bloke, but also I turned it around into something that was super special for me and I will go and enjoy the, what happens next, I suppose, but also... I will come back to you in two weeks' time with my uh, blind date episode. I'm very excited to share what happens. The good, the bad, the ugly. I am an open book. You will always get that from me. And I look forward to coming back on Pod 50 to share. So anyway, take care. Make good choices. All those bits and pieces. Now I love you all to the moon and back. This is Danny. Signing off. (laughs) 